One of the design flaws with my soap dish mold was the placement of the ejector pins right over the thinnest section of the casting. This problem made itself evident when the mold got stuck and the pressure of the pins punched right through the aluminum instead of ejecting the part. To fix the thin section problem, I decided to modify the mold so the ridges at the bottom of the soap dish would protrude upwards instead of down, thereby thickening the section. Another problem was the lack of ejector pins over the sprue or pouring channel section of the mold. Adding pins here would provide more even pressure for ejecting the part and reduce the risk of it getting stuck wedged in at an angle. Readsandmachines.com Speaking of upgrades, my friend modified his CNC mill to interface with a PlayStation controller. This made jogging the axis so much easier than having to press buttons on the computer. I guess all those years of playing video games finally paid off. Here I am drilling the holes for the new ejector pins. I counterboard them on the cavity side for the pin heads and counterboard them on the reverse side so the springs would sit flat. I used this funky end mill with a pilot in the end, perfect for this application milling on an angled surface. I then milled off the protruding ridges from the mold. Now machining and holding the camera with your other hand has never been easier. Using the step function, I milled the new ridges with a ball end mill. Alright, here we have some upgrades to the molding press. I added two more ejector pins so that we have ejection on the sprue part of it. Furthermore, I added an adapter for an impact wrench so I don't have to use that big handle to open and close it. And what you're seeing below this is a DJ coffin case modified to be a platform so this thing doesn't spin round and round when it's unscrewing. So I just carriage bolted some wood on there. Really, it's just a temporary to see if this thing works, so I don't care if it gets lit on fire. I received this as a parcel to some trade, and the guy had it in his side yard for who knows how long, and there's a whole bunch of mold inside it. Anyways, here's pouring mode. And there's this little cup thing. This goes right there to aid pouring. Then once pouring has succeeded, tilt it up and I'll demonstrate the impact action right now with my new Craigslist find. Now over here I have another permanent mold I recently completed, and for those of you Italians watching, no, this is not a big Pazail press. It is a mold for 1 and 1 16th inch aluminum round stock, basically an ingot mold shaped like round bars. Make it a useful shape so you can turn it in the lathe. So we'll be trying that out today. And over here I modified the manifold because I needed an extra air outlet. Before it was all a mess of pipe fittings and it was inconvenient because every time I pushed the air hose in, it would want to unscrew it. So this way, if I push this way, this way, or that way, it's not going to unscrew it. And I moved the pressure relief thing right here because before I couldn't put it there because my old funnel would be in the way. So we got the hose for the impact driver, we have the input hose, and then we have the hose for the burner air. Alright, let's get this party started. Mm -hmm. 